Hi, everybody. Last time you had to, to join us via Zoom, yeah. and now you get to be with people. This is my first live audience in like two years. You guys, this is so good. I miss people, like right there. Where do, here they are. They're right there. I know, it feels really good. I like people too, and it's yeah. really nice to have people here. It's so sad when people are not around other people. It's not a good thing. No. It's not normal. No. Well, you're also extra lonely because you had a full house during COVID. Well, it's still ongoing, but at the height of it, your daughters were home, and now they're gone, so it's an empty house. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. No, it was it was it was an extra spe special treat to have them that little bit of time mm -hmm. because being with them as adults mm -hmm. is it's fun. I mean, I love them at every age. That was Sasha's graduation from high school. She is in college and they are doing well and they are just amazing young women. How old are they now? Uh, twenty three and twenty. Whoa. Women, I know. Scary. They were like, I think the first time you were here, mm -hmm. before your husband was president even, you came here with them. They were eight and ten. They were big. And just to see the Jonas Brothers. They love you the Jonas Brothers. You brought them to brother. see the Jonas Brothers. Now they're bringing grown men home. Uh, <laughs> before it was just like a pop band. Now they have boyfriends and real lives and all that stuff. But. Yeah, they have grown up right before our very eyes, and they are doing well. I mean, it was... Yeah, I was going to say, so, so it was very important to both of you to raise them, it's, it, you know, to grow up in the White House yeah. with, with, you know, people serving you all the time and taking care mm -hmm. of you, to then all of a sudden go back into the real world. Yeah. And they've really adjusted. Well, we, you know, that was sort of our philosophy, and, you know, not just in the White House. I... I, I I listened to what my mother said when she was raising us. She says, I'm not raising babies. I'm raising real people to be out in the world. And I kept that in mind with the girls. I mean, they wouldn't always be in that bubble of the White House. So they had to learn how to make their beds. They had to learn how to drive. They had to learn how to be compassionate, independent, responsible people uh, so that they would enter the world as responsible, compassionate, capable people. And I think they are amazing young women because of that. So. It's, yeah, it's hard to do that in that environment. Yeah, yeah. And that picture that we showed just now of the family, uh, y'all just look so relaxed and so happy. And, and you and, uh, and Barack are celebrating your 30-year wedding anniversary. 30 years. <laughs> That's. That's impressive. I've, I've known him for a long time. That guy's been around, yeah. hanging out. <laughs> and, and, you know, a, a lot of relationships go through a lot of things mm -hmm. to test it. I'd imagine your partner being president of the United States would be very stressful. That to was a hassle. Yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> that was a thing. Yeah. Um, but it, it brought us closer, and uh, it gave us an opportunity to do something outside of ourselves, to serve our country, to do it as a team. Um, I respect him. I know a lot of people miss him right around now. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. But yeah, it, uh, uh, amazingly, that time in the White House, because we were working on hard things all the time, it brought us closer. We had to be each other's best friends. Yeah. We lived in the bubble with each other. Um, had to learn how to get along because he was the person I was seeing all the time. He's the only person that we're, we're, we understand what we both went through. And yeah. we have that unique experience. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, who else can, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. mean, a couple of people that you could talk to that, that you know, that had that same experience, a couple of people you'd want to. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> so if you look I, at. I think you all got one. Well, uh, if you look at what, uh, what he was not great at, 30 years ago, <laughs> and what he's better at now, and vice versa, what are they? Uh, he's pretty good at golf now. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing a lot of golf. Uh huh. Um, not so good at picking up after himself. <laughs> no, he had he, a lot of help doing that. He, yeah. He thinks he's good at it, at it but he, he had a lot of help. You're right. He's, he's gotten a little worse at that. So he got used to that bubble of everybody. Uh, we yeah. all did. Yeah, Let sure. Let me say, you know, it's not like I'm... I miss cooking or anything. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so supposedly, uh, Drake is interested in playing the part oh. of your husband in a movie. Uh, Does what do you, any movie? What do you, uh, it would be the movie about your husband. Oh, it would okay. Be a, he would be playing the part of Barack. How do you feel about Drake playing that role? I don't, I don't know that he's got the ears for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're both cute. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're both yeah. cute, but he'd have to sort of do something with his ears. Some prosthetics <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> all right, uh, we'll take a break. More with Michelle. She's here all the whole show. We are back with former First Lady Michelle Obama. And uh, the, you were here when you launched Past the Love. Yes. Do you want to tell everybody what's happening with that and, uh, and what you're doing with it now? For those of you who don't know, we've got this wonderful Netflix show. It's a kids' adventure food show called Waffles and Mochi. I'm here also taping the second season of it, but as part of the show, we wanted to make sure that families in need had access to the food and the recipes that we were uh, testing out on the show. So we started an initiative called Pass the Love, we, where we are, our goal was to get one million meal kits to families across the country. We surpassed our goal, um, <laughs> thanks to so many people. Um, and it's all about food equity in this time of quarantine. There are a lot of families that struggled, um, and we have to keep that in mind because even though it feels like things are coming to an end, there are a lot of families out there that are going hungry today in this country. Um, so we're gonna keep it going. We're still doing more and more meal kits, so if you're interested, go to waffasandmochi.org and we want to keep feeding families across this country and making sure kids can engage in you know, the, the whole activity of exploring the wor world and learning about food, but having the resources at home to participate. So I want to thank you, Ellen, because you uh, contributed a huge amount, helped us reach our goal. As always, Ellen, always giving. Our thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. Uh, before, you know, I know, uh, I know that you didn't have as hard a transition when you, when you left, uh, when, when your husband mm -hmm. left office, um, but how do you go from, as, as I'm going to transition out of this show and do something, whatever that is, how, how did you go from your crazy schedule mm. to nothing at all? How was that adjustment for you? Well, it, it didn't really go to nothing at all. I mean, we've got a pretty full plate, True. and that's what's gonna happen to you. I mean, you are not the kind of person who's gonna be able to just sit. You, you need to do that for a second, though. I'll you sit for a second. You need to give yourself a moment, but the I'm beauty, gonna lay down for a second. Lay down, lay, 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 lay yeah. down, lay yeah. down, sprawl out. Yeah. You're gonna need it. Um, but the world is your oyster, Ellen, and that's all I'll say. You have the strategic mind, the talent, the heart, um, and you'll be able to shape whatever you want and do whatever you want and help more people because you've been doing it and I know you're not gonna stop. Uh, so because of that, you will not be doing nothing. You will have a full schedule, as, uh, but you'll be doing it on your own terms and that's a beautiful thing and I, I wish I want that for you. You've earned that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. When we come back, Michelle, actually, uh, we, we did something earlier today where she uh, helps me try to find a new hobby. We'll be back. We're back with former First Lady Michelle Obama, and I know you recently broke ground on uh, Obama Presidential mm -hmm. Center in Chicago, which is a fantastic thing. I mean, I remember when he was just starting to talk about it mm -hmm. and raise money for it, and... It's, it's now it's there. It's near and dear to our heart. We're locating it on the south side of Chicago in Jackson Park, which is the area where we met and married, where I grew up, where Barack was a community organizer. Um, and it's not just gonna be a presidential museum, but it's gonna be a community center, an athletic center. Um, it's gonna be, there's gonna be a place for the community to gather. It's really, we, we wanna bring billions of dollars into that neighborhood, which is predominantly African-American, predominantly underserved. Um, so we want it to be more than just a place to hold archives, but a place for people to gather. So great. Um, we're gonna have a garden there, um, a, a sledding hill. So it's a beautiful facility. 
Uh, and we are so proud and excited to be able to give back to the community that made us who we are. Yeah, fantastic. And you're, um, you're doing something really special to honor a, a very special young lady, which yeah. is a heartbreaking story. We um, get a lot of donations to support the build. Um, and a lot of times you name them after rich people. But one of the things our donors have decided to do was to make their donations in honor of people on the ground, community people. Um, and we are naming uh, the Winter Garden Room after a young woman, Hydea Pendleton. Uh, Hydea Pendleton was uh, just about to graduate from high school, uh, but was shot uh, in her neighborhood um, just days after performing at Barack's second presidential uh, inaugural parade. Uh, and I didn't get to know Hydea. She was an honor student. She was a major ret. But over the years, I did, I've gotten to know her family, her classmates. Um, and I've, I've gotten to, I, I understand the promise that was lost by her death. And so we're naming the Winter Garden uh, in her honor because when people enter the library, we want to, them to think of young people like Hydea who have so much promise. We want to remember the promise that these young people have as people walk into the center. Uh, and I was able to tell her mom that, uh, that news um, uh, just a few months ago. And, you know, it just touched me that, and she, she didn't know why I was calling her in. Um, and we've remained close over the years, but to be able to tell her that her daughter's death was not in vain, that we would remember her in a, this very, very special way, yeah. um, you know, mean, meant so much to me and so much to it's her It's beautiful family. you're doing that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, um... Um, I have to say, uh, you know, we, we never really spoke uh, about the when I received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Mm. But, but building up to, to, first of all, getting the phone call that, that I was going to receive the, the Medal of Freedom was just unbelievable when I got the phone call. So when I got the phone call, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. And then it kind of just like, you know, building up, you know, for the next month or two or whatever it was till I went to Washington to receive it. I wasn't really, yeah. you know, everybody's like, you know. No, no big deal. I, I was. I was acting like, you know, and everybody's <laughs> like, you got to feel this. you got to take it mm -hmm. in. And I was like, yeah. And I really didn't feel anything until I was sitting there until the president of the United States was, was speaking about me. And... I, of all the people mm -hmm. in the audience, I locked eyes with you, and you just kept shaking your head mm -hmm. like that, and I just, so I started shaking my yeah. head, and you <laughs> right. kind of got tears in your eyes, I got tears in my eyes, and then I just started <laughs> sobbing, because I was looking at you, just, I just, both of us were just looking at each other, yeah. but I just locked in with you, and... Well, what they do is that they read your accomplishments, and at that moment, as they're pinning the medal as... Barack is pinning the medal around your neck, you know, a military aide is going over your history, the impact that you've made, the doors you've broken down. And I don't think, you know, to be in the East Room of the White House in that ceremony and to hear your accomplishments being read out like that, and I knew that you, that it was clicking for you that this was happening. And I was like, yep. Okay. It's, yeah. it's about you. Yeah. yeah. Got gotcha you now. Yeah. <laughs> You're used to getting people, but here you are. Yeah. But I, yeah. you know, that, that was a moment, and I'm glad that it didn't go uh, uh, un, un, unnoticed by you, that, it, that you were able to take it in. Yeah. That was a powerful, yeah. powerful moment. Touched, well deserved. Well, it touched me, and it, and it started our friendship. Yeah. I, I love it. All right, we're going to take a look back at our favorite <laughs> moments together after this. We'll be back. <laughs>